time to talk about YouTube content. I'm very excited about this particular tutorial because I spend a lot of time on YouTube and I really want you to be successful with your clients work and also for your own work. So let's get into this and talk a little bit about what you can do. The first thing you need to know is that YouTube is used in many different ways. So SEO is first and foremost always because YouTube is that space where people go to search. They are on the hunt for something. So let's make sure that they find you. Marketing and lead generation, this is a big part of YouTube. There is always some sort of reason for people to have YouTube videos up there and a lot of it is marketing and lead generation. Branding, when someone really wants to be known for something, seriously, YouTube is the place to go. And also there's a lot of e-commerce and services and business services, B2B, B2C, all the people-to-people -people types of marketing going on inside of YouTube. So you and your customers, really your clients, need to be on YouTube, I believe. Now, if you really want a super deep dive into everything YouTube, YouTube has a Creator Academy, which is awesome. So you can go in there, just go step by step, go through all the things. I highly recommend it. And they have a whole section on content strategy. So seriously, if you have the time and if YouTube is your space to be in or your client's space to be in, then please use YouTube Creator Academy to do a deeper dive. We also have lots of resources in this entire section inside the school, lots of people to follow, lots of good ideas. Also remember that there is that Google integration for YouTube and there's a whole tutorial on that, especially inside of uh, YouTube 101 and setting up a channel. So make sure you review all of that. Now, there are different types of videos, but the thing I want to focus on are the ones that are magnetized to your audience and something that they really want to share. Because if it's not magnetized and it's not shareable, then you're really not going to get the most out of YouTube. Now, there, these are the current popular YouTube video types. Okay, so think about your clients and think about yourself and see where you fall into this list. Most people is going to fall into the commentary or vlogs or product reviews or how-to and tutorials. That's really big important. So more than likely, it's going to fall into those three. But you might have clients in some of these other areas, and that's cool. These are the top ones. You can see here on these images that there's a quite a mix of things, and this is on the home page, and it's still serving up things from four years ago. So remember, YouTube videos are going to be resurfaced through time. I personally have videos that are being watched every day, like hundreds of times a day, that I put up in 2016. So you really want to think about Evergreen and having those YouTube videos brought up on and on. General guidelines. This is really important. We're going to really be anchoring everything to these general guidelines right here. You need to know what your audience prefers to see visually. Okay, so what? how is their preference in terms of what they see on a video? You need to know this for your audience. You need to know how long your audience has time for watching a video. Do they prefer to sit down with a cup of coffee and listen to something for a half an hour? Or are they doing things on the run and prefer, you know, three or four or five minute snippets of things? You need to know how long your audience has time for watching a video. You also, obviously, need to know the topics that are attractive to your audience. Not necessarily what you want to pose, but what they have questions about. You need to know what your audience wants to know from you. You also need to know what makes them click subscribe without you having to prompt them for it. What is it that makes them subscribe without you saying, hey, click subscribe? What is that? And also, what makes them share something? Now, the good news is all of the answers to these questions can be found in YouTube Studio Analytics through time. You'll still need to be posting lots of different things and to figure out the answers to all of these questions. And, you'll, and YouTube Analytics will show you what the answers are to these general guidelines. Let's do an example. Let's say my audience prefers to see outside. They like nature. They like all things outside. My audience also only has five minutes and is extremely distracted with all the things. 
My audience also loves to hear about new green technology. That's the topics. And my audience shares when they are emotionally moved by my content. So that means that I'm going to have to dumb my things outside. I'm going to have to do it in a very concise way inside of five minutes. It's going to have to be super hyper-focused on new green technology. And those keywords for whatever that technology is going to be first and foremost with the SEO, and I'm going to have to create some sort of story arc that involves some sort of emotion, and this could be a happy emotion, an awesome emotion, or a very upset emotion, it doesn't matter as long as it's emotionally moving, then that's what's going to make people share this, all right? So, you know, there's lots of examples of this on YouTube, but I just pulled up one that sort of falls into this. It's shot outside. It's cool new green technology. It's so awesome that you get inspired and you really want to share it. It's mind-blowing is like they say there. So this falls into that category. Let's do another example. My audience prefers to see examples on a computer. So they want to see the DIY of it. They want to see what button I'm pushing. My audience has 10 minutes generally and is easily distracted. My audience loves to hear about shortcuts and new apps. They like to be on that leading edge of things. And my audience shares when they are wowed by the tutorial. So I have to wow them in the tutorial. Well, Jen does this very well on her channel. Does exactly all of those things. So again, you have to answer these questions for you and your clients. And I would just print this out, and whenever you have client work inside of YouTube, I would do this. What does your? Maybe your client already knows the answers to these questions. Maybe it will. You will get those answers after you've posted a whole bunch of videos inside of YouTube, so that you get the analytics. But number one, what does your audience prefer to see? Do they like to be inside, outside, on the computer? Do they prefer to see your face or not see your face? The answers might surprise you. How long does your audience have time for watching a video? You will learn this easily through time inside your analytics, but you might already have a little bit of an idea. Test it. What are the topics that are attractive to your audience? All you have to do is ask your audience. Poll your audience. Send an email. See which posts on Facebook are getting the most traction. It's very easy to figure out those keywords and those key phrases and those to topics that are attractive to your audience. Now, what makes them click and subscribe is going to be something that you're probably going to have to dig into a little bit. Is it some emotional thing? Is it some something that makes them outraged about something? Is it something that makes them want to help somebody else? You have to figure out what that is and then build the story arc of the video around that answer. Now, let's take a deep breath because that's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a lot of fun actually when you work with your clients and you work with yourself to answer those questions. But let's see what maybe you already have and see if you can get those up on YouTube as these are super good content also. You can take any Facebook Live video and download it and upload it back up into um, into YouTube. You can take slide presentations, um, you know, like webinars, and you can put those up on YouTube. You can create some course content and then take some samples or teasers from that course content and put up there. You can take your blog post and narrate over images that blog post or all sorts of different things you can do with blog posts. You can take customer reviews in text or in video and make them uh, videos up on YouTube. So if you already have content, you can repurpose it on YouTube right away before you start creating that content that is specific for YouTube by answering those questions we just went through. And just a reminder, you know, webinar recordings, you can go back in time and get your webinars and you can upload the full webinar. You can do a teaser with a link back to your email list and the download that goes with the webinar. You can upload clips of the webinar so that there are specific things that relate to specific keywords that will help in your SEO for your channel. And remember, we have a whole tutorial about SEO inside this uh, section. And always have CTAs and cards and in screens and links in the description. All those things, again, in that other tutorial, you'll find all of those things. 
There are so many things you can do with webinar recordings. Now, Facebook Live videos, it sort of depends on where you did the live, where you can download the video. In general, you got to look for those three dots. But if it's on a page, it's generally down in the bottom. And if it's in a group, it's down in the top right. So go figure. Just hunt for the three dots, and then you'll find that download video link. Check all the places. Open it up to the full um, watch view, and then you'll be able to find those three dots. Then uploading, you know, we have an entire tutorial on uploading, but generally, again, it looks different depending on where you are. Uh, if you're in studio, um, YouTube studio, it's going to look like the one with the three images there, one's for upload, one's for going live, the other is for creating a post. And if you don't know what creating a post on YouTube is all about, that's in the tutorials too. But it might be there, it might be up in the top right, um, it, wherever you find that little icon that looks like a video, old school video camera with a plus on it, that's where you upload your videos. And then notice that the uploading, the new way of uploading just has this straight thing right here. And again, there's a whole tutorial on uploading, you can go into that. So creating a video that is magnetized and shareable is artistic and technical so you have to answer those questions and the art part of it is you have to think about the recording and so now do you answer these questions too I see I have a lot of questions for you to answer here do you have the room and budget to create your own studio you know a lot of people have really nice places for their own studios you have to test this out but if you're just recording your screen it doesn't matter where you are but if you're going to be on screen then you can think about your own studio and there's a lot of uh, resources inside this thing on people who will teach you how to set up a studio do you prefer to outsource filming and editing there are a lot of clients that you will find who want to outsource this to you so are you good at filming and editing or are you going to subcontract that out well the videos you create be attractive to your audience so if the videos that you're being uh, if you in your contract with your client is or if you're the one creating the videos then you will of course be able to make them so that they're attractive to your audience but if you are just posting the videos that your client is creating and you have no access to the technical parts of how it's being creative then you only have the words um, and maybe the images some of the thumbnails or whatever to be able to adjust so what part of the whole project do you have access to to make it attractive um, and then also if you're doing this for yourself, um, are you going to do it for yourself or will you be outsourcing it to a professional video? Um, think about that. These are all the things you need to think about and make a decision about before going forward. And it, there might be a mix of services involved. Maybe you do all the filming but someone else does the editing and then you do the posting. Maybe for a client, they do all the raw uh, video and you outsource the video editing and then you do all the posting I mean it could be any variation of those things and the last thing are you up to date with video styles there is nothing worse than looking at a video where someone is doing it as if they are in 1990 and you just can't do that so you have to look and make sure that your video style is up to date and that means that uh, that's going to take a little bit of research depending on your client's demographics and also the thing that's attractive to them okay so again back to those original questions and you can see this is just you know how many different ways this is done and how um, you know this is it's going to be different for everybody what's attractive to them so answer these questions every time before you upload a video is this video visually attractive to my audience is the sound on this video pleasant to listen to 
there is some research that says that sound is the most important thing on video and if the sound is bad it doesn't matter how it looks if the sound is bad people will click away and I do believe this it's my experience too um, that if the sound is bad they will not listen to it is the is it the best length for your audience so if it drags on and on and on and on all right, and you can see in your analytics if people drop off after seven minutes, you realize seven minutes is at more than seven minutes is going to be too long for my audience. Go back to your analytics and find that out. Does it answer a question my audience has? The audience doesn't care about you. I'm sorry to say that. They care about themselves. They want answers to questions. They want to know things. So answer a question your audience has. Bring your own personality and your own voice and your own everything to it, but answer a question that they have. Is it evergreen? This is really, really important in terms of YouTube content. Because those videos resurface year after year after year after year based on the keywords and the title and the amount of engagement it has had through time and if it's being featured and all of those things, is it evergreen? If you can, if at all possible, make every video you create as evergreen as possible. And the last question to ask yourself is, will people share this video without prompting? Will they share it? Will they be so inspired, so uh, emotionally changed because of it that they feel compelled to share it? Okay, print this out. Put it in front of you. As you're building your videos for YouTube and you're creating the content for, video, for YouTube, ask these questions. Is it attractive? Is it pleasant? Is it a good length? Does it answer a question? Is it evergreen? And will people share it? And if you have a yes to all of these, I can guarantee you your video will do very, very well on YouTube. All right, go forth. Create some content on YouTube.